Hi, welcome to Jeff's 5 for July 30th, 2015. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the Fearless book one more time. Uh, got a lot of writing stuff to talk about because it's really been a, a great week on the writing front and of course we're going to check it about So You Think You Could Dance. So let's get started. So this week on YAA I got to interview uh, Jeff Shang, who's the author and photographer behind the Fearless book. Uh, it was a great interview. And really good to talk to him uh, kind of in depth about how the project came about, how the book itself came about, uh, how they put together the mix of his story plus the athlete's stories. Uh, it's a really good interview. I highly recommend it. Uh, the link to it is below the video uh, in the comments, either on the blog or on YouTube. Uh, go check it out. It's a half hour long. It's a good interview. And... Uh, Hopefully after you hear it, if you haven't already, you'll pick up the book as well, because the book is really extraordinary. So please give that a listen and think about buying the book as well. So after about a year in the process of writing, I finally got Hattrick 3 turned into the publisher a couple days ago, uh, which excites me. Uh, it's a little bittersweet, because it's the last novel uh, for Simon and Alex, where they'll be the principal characters. Uh, but it was exciting to, to be able to cap off their story um, Word from the beta readers is uh, that it's a good book, that it holds up well uh, with the rest of the series and really kind of caps off uh, the primary part of the series uh, well. I've got, uh, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to knock off one more short story uh, that really puts a big bow on top of the Simon and Alex story. Uh, but I'm already thinking in 2016 about writing uh, some ancillary characters from the universe, uh, giving Leo and Matt a story and giving a story to somebody who got cut completely out of Hat Trick 3 uh, simply because I couldn't do their story justice in it. Uh, if you want more information about that, I actually wrote a blog post over on the JMS book site uh, that I will link to uh, under the video. Uh, so you can go check that out. It gives you a little bit more insight on the series as a whole, plus talks about uh, the, uh, the things I'm thinking about writing about. And... Uh, Look for more details on 3 uh, as we get near September. Uh, the book's currently scheduled to come out uh, September, the uh, first Sunday in September, which I think is the 6th, uh, followed by the paperback uh, later at the end of that month. So I'm excited that that's done, and I can't wait for everybody to get a chance to read it for themselves. Something that's more in the near term is the release of Heatwave Tuscaloosa, which comes up on Sunday, August 2nd. Uh, kind of excited for this to get out, too. It's the perfect time for it to get out, because most of the country is kind of cooking this week with uh, heat waves certainly on the East Coast going on. Uh, plus the South is hot as usual. Uh, even here in Humboldt County, we're having abnormally high temperatures, which for us is only in the high 70s. But to give you an idea, just earlier this week, uh, the Eureka Weather Office reported uh, that it was 77 degrees, which was the highest that July had ever been. Uh, and the previous record, I think, was 76 in 1994, if I remember the stat correctly. So, while we're not boiling here, we're, we're heated up a little bit, too. So, perfect time for a heat wave book to come out, right? Uh, there's a link to uh, my site that has uh, some purchase links, as well as an excerpt you can read. Uh, and like I said, that comes out on Sunday uh, by the JMS book site, and then it'll be available wide starting the following Sunday on the 9th. So if you want a nice little steamy summer read, I hope you'll check that out. So as if there wasn't enough good writing stuff going on this week, um, I also signed a contract for a short story that I submitted a couple months ago. Uh, it'll be my first time with Pride Publications, which is part of the Totally Bound group, and I'm psyched to be over there to kind of you know, expand my footprint on the publishing world by just a little bit more. Uh, the story's called A Sound Design, uh, and it's about a voiceover artist who uh, kind of has romantic designs on the contractor who's building him an in-home studio. Uh, I like the story. It's cute. It's fun. It's light. It's romantic. Um, a little bit uh, steamy on the side as well, uh, just to keep things interesting. Uh, that story will be out probably February 2016 is what it's looking like. Um, so more details on that much further down. Uh, there is a preview you can actually read. I've had a preview up on the site for a while, and if you haven't seen it, uh, I'll link up to it here, and it'll just give you a little sneak peek of what that story's about. Uh, and I'm excited to be able to actually say, uh, you know, looking out in the 16, that there's actually one story that's already staked to, cut, to uh, come out there. So you think you can dance was a little on the mediocre side this week. Uh, I thought it started off good with that group dance that was kind of a nice 
uh, it had a beachy feel to it. Uh, the second dance uh, that had Yaya uh, in it, she was the standout for me in that second dance. Uh, it was a good contemporary piece, I thought. And then the rest of the first hour kind of fell flat for me. Um, it, just, it was okay, but it wasn't like, wow. You know, and I always want wow from that show. Uh, the dance of the week, though, was wow. Uh, and it belonged to Virgil and Haley and their robot dance. <laughs> They're kind of decked out in what looks like Tron costumes to me. Um, but they do a kick-ass hip-hop number, uh, which you can see up in the eye icon up here. Um, there was also a dance that was uh, Neptune, uh, really showing a different side of himself with a contemporary piece with Kate uh, that I thought was quite extraordinary. It was almost a dance that we but didn't quite make it. Uh, up in the eye icon, you can also check out uh, the other few dances that I thought were a highlight this week, uh, as I put a playlist of those together. Um, I think, you know, I've got my final four figured out, um, as I said on my Dance Dance Wednesday post uh, yesterday. Uh, really looking at over on the street side, I think you've got Yaya and Virgil, who are shoe-ins for top four. Uh, Stage side, I'm a little unsure on one of my picks, but I think Jim is a definite. Uh, he's very strong, although he, his hip-hop wasn't that great, as good this week as it was last week. And uh, for the girl, I kind of go back and forth between uh, Gabby and Haley, uh, but I'm going to pick Gabby because she really seems to be a tapper who can really tackle anything. Uh, so those are my official top four picks. Uh, as we move further into the competition, we'll see how those hold up. And, of course, next week we'll talk some more about how dance turns out and see who gets in jeopardy. I was very pleased with who got let go this week. Uh, I was not a big fan of Moses. Uh, I would have actually let Asaf go over, um, I can't think of the other, guy, the other b-boy's name right now, because um, I thought that other b-boy did pretty good in Afro Jazz, um, as opposed to that dreadful cha-cha that Asaf got to do. But maybe we can purge him next week, uh, since he was also in the bottom three. So we'll see how that turns out. So that's it for the five this week. Hope you'll take an opportunity to like the video, maybe subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment either on YouTube or the blog, depending on where you're watching this. Uh, thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you again next week.